Hello Photoshop people, welcome to this video which is going to discuss in perspective edits. Basically what is an in perspective edit? Well we have this picture in front of us courtesy of freedigitalphotos.net which shows a lovely beautiful tower with um, lots of windows on the wall but what I want to do is I want to get rid of those windows. Now normal um, approach to Photoshop would be to use these clone stamp tools to get rid of the um, the detail. However, you've got to bear in mind that the bricks start off quite large at the bottom of the screen, but they go quite small at the top. So by and large, using the clone stamp tool, you'd have to be very, very careful in your dragging. The way I'm going to show you now is much, much better and keeps everything in perspective. And this is known as the vanishing point tool. So with this as it stands at the moment, um, I need to create what's known as some three-dimensional planes. Now this is done by going into the filter menu and choosing vanishing point. So within here, I'm just going to click on to um, the first corner of the wall I want to um, put in perspective and drag across and click and go down and click and go across and click but try to keep it in your mind's eye in three dimensions so something along the lines of that is probably in 3d so click on that and as you can see I've now got this wall appearing at uh, this checkered board but I need it to be a bit bigger because it's not including this part of the image here so just with the mouse go to the middle handle and drag downwards and as you can see I've made the wall bigger ideal perfect so I'm just going to click on OK at that point the reason I do that is just so it keeps the um, image saved or the the plane saved and now what I'm going to do is just create a new layer the reason I've done this is because of undestructive edits if you're not familiar with what undestructive edits are please refer to one of my earlier videos in this series so with that layer selected I'll go back into the filter menu and choose vanishing point so here we are <clears throat> what do we do? Well, I'm going to go over to the side here and use the stamp tool, the clone stamp tool. I'm going to make sure heel is switched on. So when I actually do the um, dragging over the windows to get rid of them, it tries to keep it consistent with the um, surrounding areas so the colours will, will match. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click just near it. And then with the mouse, as I move over, as you can see, I've got now this brush. Now, before I go into the drawing of it, I'm just going to show you what perspective edits do for you. So I'm going to do the Alt key and click on this window. I'm going to make the brush much bigger using the square brackets. Now, watch what happens. If I stay here, the window stays at that size and that perspective. But watch, if I move that up, look at it. Can you see what's happening? It's making the window smaller and keeping it in perspective with the rest of the image, which is just fantastic. So if I wanted to replace that window with a copy of that one, I've just clicked once. There you go. A little bit more work and I could actually put the same window repeated multiple times over the image in perspective. Now what I'm going to do is just undo that because I want to get rid of windows, not create them. So I'm just going to alt click here. I'm going to change the size of the brush to something much, much smaller. And then with the mouse, I'm just going to drag over the window I no longer want and then let go. And as you can see, look at that. It's immediately got rid of the window. So I'm going to zoom in, control plus and minus, just so I can get to this window a bit better. I'm going to drag very carefully and let go from time to time just to get rid of that window. There you go, look at that. Fantastic. So if we zoom out, what window? There was never a window there. So I'm just going to finish off by doing the same thing to this window down here to get rid of it. And there you have it. We can get rid of windows in perspective quite easily. Let's just go a little bit crazier. Let's just alt click here and drag a crosswords. And as you can see, look at that. We're getting rid of windows, left, right and centre. Fantastic. Don't think Bill Gates would like that very much, me getting rid of windows. Sorry, I'll try and keep the jokes to a bare minimum. Um, so I'll just carry on using alt-click method just to get rid of the windows I don't want anymore. So once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to click on OK. And there you go. Look, 
no more windows. But what's actually happened behind the scenes is it's actually drawn onto this new layer. So if I want to go back to the base image again, I just hide that specific layer and there's the windows. Let me just show it you from the other way around. That's what it's actually drawn onto that new layer for us. And that's what's on top of that particular um, wall there. Now that in a lot of cases would be the end of the the video because you've now effectively done what you set out to do which is edit things in perspective but there's so much more you can do with this tool and it's not very clearly illustrated let's say I want to actually put a picture onto this wall so um, let's say I want a, um, an advertisement campaign to be put on this wall I can do that but I've got to first of all select an image that I want to work on so I'm just going to open up an image that um, I want to use okay so I've got this picture here of um, this boy with um, a globe so what I'm going to do is using the rectangular marquee tool I'm going to draw the area that I want to, to use so say that much of the image I'm going to do control C to copy it and then I'm going to go back into the um, the tower image um, now pasting it here is no good because it won't be in perspective so I'm just going to undo that what we want to do is we want to paste it in perspective now for this I'm just going to add another layer and then go into the filter menu and choose vanishing point again and now I'm going to click on paste and again at first you'll be disheartened because it looks exactly the same don't worry it's about to change big style now the first thing we've got to bear in mind is that um, in here if you click away from this image that's it game over so you've got to be very careful when you're doing your dragging now the first thing I want to do is this image is just slightly too big so I'm going to use the transform tool off to the side here which will bring up the handles I'm going to go to the corner and drag in to make the image smaller using the shift key to keep it in proportion so I'm quite happy with that and now not doing anything else normally if you're in Photoshop you press enter at this point don't want to do that keeping it as it is I'm going to now just with the mouse drag onto the plane now watch what happens when the mouse the arrowhead touches that plane bang look at that straight into three-dimensional so I'm just going to let go of the mouse there and click on OK and as a result I've now got a three-dimensional image sitting on top of um, the um, tower but there's so much more we can do with it because now we've got it as a separate layer we can now start doing some fiddling for example what if someone's painted that onto the wall I'll just choose the overlay style and look at that it's now blended it into the um, the brick wall behind it I don't like that too much so I'm going to just change that back to normal but I'm now going to go absolutely over the edge with this because what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into another image I've got available uh, which is called wall again courtesy of free digital photos.net and I'm going to select the whole image with the marquee tool and I'm then going to do control C to copy it then go back into my tower image and I'm going to do another layer and I'm going to just turn off that picture that we just brought in and then go into the filter menu and vanishing point again and paste but this time I'm going to just leave it as is I'm not going to change the size the dimensions of it I'm going to drag it again onto that plane and wallop look at that it immediately puts it into perspective I'm going to move it into that corner about there and then use the transform tool to just fill in the gaps to make it fit the whole wall and then click on OK again but now what I'm going to do is with this layer is I am definitely going to make it overlay so it looks like someone has graffitied the wall admittedly the colors don't look perfect well that's where we use our adjustments um, palette so over here I'm going to choose the vibrance tool and it will create a new option um, but before I start fiddling around with vibrance I only want it to affect that layer and this is where you need to use the alt key so holding down the alt key in between the two um, options of the vibrance and the layer you click once and it brings it in and then using the vibrance tools I'm going to get rid of the saturation I want to remove the saturation altogether and then probably ramp the vibrance up a little bit so it, it fills in a bit more and then that's it I'm done and as you can see now I've now put graffiti on top of um, a national monument so there you are
Vanishing Point. Vanishing Point allows you to edit things in three dimensions and it also allows you to put images on and put them in perspective as well. Hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to you seeing some more of mine. Thanks. Bye-bye.